all right guys welcome back in this video i'm going to talk about the image classification using deep learning neural network so let's get start so first of all i want to introduce about the image classification so the image classification mean the uh, classify the image into several class and detect uh, this image which class it belongs to let's say if we have the two images then the algorithm of image classification should detect it's the picture of cat and it, it is the picture of dog so based on our given uh, images or photo our model should detect whether this photo is the cat photo or dog photo or any other animal photo yeah so here in this slide actually i want to compare the image classification uh, with object detection and image segmentation so for the analyzing the satellite imagery we have to know about these terms because these terms use significantly and we are going to use this term uh, throughout all this video series or the course so here the image classification means we will classify whether this photo is cat or dog uh, that means the whole picture will be classified into only one class and another technique is the localization of object uh, it's also called the object detection so in the particular picture uh, we have to detect uh, where is the cat in which pixel the cat belongs to and then based on that the uh, model should draw the bounding box around this uh, particular object in this picture we are trying to detect the cat uh, and then in first picture we just classify and in second picture is the object detection uh, that means localization of the object and uh, third one is also the object detection might be uh, on the same image we might have the dog and cat and other animal uh, picture as well uh, this is also called the object detection for the uh, more than two class i mean the more than two objects so here in this particular picture we can see the dog is represented by this blue bounding box and uh, there are there are two cats uh, represented by the red bounding box and then the dog is represented by the uh, green bounding box uh, so in uh, within the same image if we try to detect the multiple object this is called multi object detection and uh, in the case of satellite imagery we might have to detect the uh, building footprint uh, along with uh, let's say the uh, road segmentation uh, and uh, other features as well uh, and another one very important term is the uh, segmentation uh, in segmentation actually what we do is uh, based on this particular object we classify the pixel uh, whether this pixel belong to uh, which class so in this particular figure we have three type of animals if if our job is to uh, segment the pixel based on the animal name uh, we we have to draw i mean the classify the pixels into whether uh, this pixel belong to cat or dog or duck or none in this particular picture we have uh, three uh, i mean three classes uh, and then the background which is another class uh, let's say four four class and here we uh, in the segmentation what we did is we read each pixels and we we try to classify it whether this pixel is dog or cat or duck or the just the background so this is called the instance segmentation uh, these are the example of multi class 
segmentation or object detection and also for the single class we can uh, do the classification and localization it is also the object detection. Okay, so, in this video I am going to uh, cover only the image classification part uh, that means uh, our I will I will show you how to download this data set actually I am going to use the Euroset data set uh, I think it contained around 30,000 uh, images of uh, this kind of satellite imagery uh, and then uh, they provide us this imagery in the different folders uh, let's say based on image we have to classify whether uh, this image is the industrial area or the uh, forest or residential or river so there are 10 different classes in our data set so uh, let's let's try to download and have a look first all right guys uh, so this is the original repository of the euroset data set so here uh, they have clearly mentioned that uh, this is the land use land cover classification with sentinel 2 data set and uh, they have some example like this uh, these are the rivers i think these are the cultivation area and these are industrial area and based on uh, several classes i think 10 different classes they have the data and then total data size is the 27000 a uh, label data set with georeference image and uh, which has the 13 spectral band uh, and consisting of 10 classes so uh, in this repository we will find the uh, data set download link and also we have uh, here uh, is the link to the original paper if you are interested I'll I'll provide this link in the description as well uh, try to check it out and uh, here for this particular example i am going to just download the uh, rgb data set if you click this link it will automatically download the data set but i already downloaded this so i am going to cancel it and then also they provide the euroset a uh, multi spectral uh, data set as well uh, which contain 13 spectral band based on which you can apply your own algorithm and then uh, try to uh, optimize it and then train uh, to the deep learning convolution neural network but for this example i am simply uh, going to use this uh, simple rgb data set so if you downloaded it uh, it will be look like this so since i am inside the euroset data set and then i have this 2750 folder and inside which i have this 10 class annual crop forest harvey corneous vegetation highway industrial something that's all and then if you go inside uh, you will see the images in this uh, name structure annual crop one annual crop two three these are all the images with the cropland so if you try to visualize it i think it's uh, really small because uh, i think it's the 128 by 128 image size and yeah these are all the images with annual crop and then these are the images of forest and similarly uh, they have all let's say industrial uh, just it's the image containing the buildings industrial area so our job is to uh, our job is to uh, train the model and uh, so that which can guess the uh, which can classify the image based on uh, which uh, we uploaded the image let's say if we try to upload the uh, this image and then um, we we uh, we let the model to guess 
uh, it should guess the highway because it this image belongs to a highway so you might wondering who created this data and how how they created so it it needs lots of labor work i think uh, they have to manually uh, tile the image first and then uh, they have to uh, categorize based on which image belongs to which class so it's a lot of manual works i i would like to thank the euroset data provider team uh, so uh, yeah that's uh, all about data so let's uh, see you in the next part Alright guys, uh, now the main core part is begin. So now I am going to explain how uh, we are going to classify the Euroset dataset. So for this example, I am going to use the ResNet uh, 50 model, which is uh, really a popular model for the uh, image classification and also it's been used for the backbone of uh, other deep learning models so for that purpose actually uh, I try to uh, execute these commands in the Google uh, collab but uh, for me Google collab is little bit slow and uh, the uh, training time for my model is significantly high and then i am unable to run it in the google collab that's why i am uh, running this codes in my local system so i already installed the tensorflow and uh, matplotlib and also required library numpy and scikit-learn uh, so if you uh, install these things uh, within the conda environment you will be able to run this cell uh, i'm not going to show you how to uh, install these things because these are the very uh, common things uh, you can easily install uh, tensorflow using a uh, conda install uh, channel conda fox uh, tensorflow uh, so here uh, I'm just going to execute this code and then show you uh, the what uh, how it works and try to explain so before that uh, I'm just restarting my kernel uh, okay so now uh, first thing is we need to import the required things so I'm going to import the matplotlib pyplot is plt and this is for the common packages for managing the directories and this is for a uh, computational library so numpy and also i am uh, importing some of the things uh, tensorflow things uh, keras is k tensorflow tf and other uh, layers uh, since this layer will be used to build our resnet 50 model and uh, i am also importing the initializer uh, like as random uniform or uh, group uniform these things also useful for the building the model and then i am importing model and other things is uh, for the our uh, result validation and testing uh, i am just importing the confusion matrix and plot confusion matrix from scikit-learn all right uh, let me execute this cell first so uh, if you install all the dependencies then it will uh, install quite easily and before that maybe i want to show you the tensorflow version so tf uh, dot dash dash version uh, so sometime uh, it might have the breaking change so if you are trying to follow my tutorial please i recommend you to install the tensorflow of 2.5.0 okay so here uh, i am setting the data set url this are the uh, def uh, the required variable i mean the constants so here my data set is inside uh, my c drive euroset folder inside download euroset in 27 50 folder so i'm just giving the data set url link 
and then the batch size uh, for this particular tax I am going to use the 32 batch size uh, that means uh, 32 images will be purchased uh, at the same time uh, the deep learning model will purchase each image on um, the certain batch so we have to provide uh, try to provide this number based on uh, 2, 4, 8, 16 or 32 or 64 and for this uh, Euroset data set uh, the image width and height is 64 and 64 so mm, I'm just providing it uh, defining it here and then for the validation I am going to use the 0.2% uh, of data set that means 0.2 uh, I mean the 20% of the uh, data set and this is the rescale factor because since uh, rgb image in the 8 bit channel has the 255 value to normalize it uh, we need to uh, i think divide it by the 255 just i am defining it here and uh, let me execute this as well okay so now we are uh, now it's time to prepare the data set for model so for the data set preparation i am going to use the uh, image data generator function from keras uh, which help us to uh, split our data set uh, into two category test uh, train and test or train or validation so uh, and then i am going to apply this rescale factor because uh, our image uh, we we need to normalize it before uh, passing it to the uh, deep learning model and here uh, for the uh, data set actually uh, I am taking this image data set from directory function uh, it will take the data set URL and then image size and then the batch size uh, there are lots of other options also available in this function so if you are curious then just search for Keras image data set from directory and then you will get the official documentation uh, here uh, you will get the all the information related to this function and also for the image data generator uh, you can you can see the official documentation here from keras okay so i'm going to run this cell yeah uh, it says here uh, it found 27,000 files belongs to 10 class since our file are already in the uh, folder structure uh, this means this uh, function will automatically uh, detect the uh, classes uh, the classes name will be the folder name and then the images uh, inside it will be the uh, main image so there are 27,000 images within the 10 class and now uh, I'm going to separate the train data set so for the train data set I'm going to use this data set gen uh, data gen uh, since we split it uh, here and then I'm going to provide the batch size uh, and then data set URL and shuffle equal to true means I want to just uh, randomly pick uh, the image and the corresponding class instead of um, let's say if we did not shuffle it then our first uh, first few images will be from annual crop and uh, second will be forest and then last will be sea lake that means uh, it will be on order and then deep learning might confuse it's always i recommend you to shuffle the image and then target size image height in width and subset is the training data set and class mode is categorical uh, so these are the options available from uh, follow from directory if you confuse please visit the keras documentation so it's just the uh, splitting of training data set and uh, now you see uh, 21,600 images that means uh, it automatically uh, get the uh, I think 80% uh, of the our data set and now for the test data set uh, I'm going to do the same 
and then uh, it will get 5400 image which is 20 percent and now if we try to visualize this image uh, simply i am going to use the uh, mat.lib function plt dot im show function and uh, here uh, first of all i get the class name and then uh, i define the figure size and after that uh, i get the uh, data set from uh, image and label name from the data set so data set is here so it's uh, already take all the images and the belonging class inside uh, this uh, inside this variable so i'm going to take the first batch that means uh, the i think uh, 32 batch size so i'm going to take the first batch and then I'm going to uh, run this for loop and then get the first nine images and here I'm just defining axis and plotting the uh, plotting the figure so uh, if I run this cell so I'll get uh, this random images so it will get the random image and then we can see uh, whether uh, our label and image are correct or wrong so now looks okay uh, everything looks okay fine so we can move to the next part so here uh, this is the core part of uh, this video so here uh, i'll write the restnet 50 model structure so the restnet uh, the structure of this model will look like this first uh, we'll pass our data set that means our image uh, into the model with uh, zero padding and then we'll fed into the convolution neural network uh, 2d convolution of course since our data is 2d and then we'll apply the ba batch normalization and then relu uh, activation function and then max pooling at the first stage and in the second stage uh, there is some convolution block and identity block and then same for stage third fourth and fifth and then at final we are going to apply the average pooling and then we'll flatten uh, flatten this layer and then uh, with the help of fully connected layer we'll get the output this is uh, if you are confused about this model uh, no need to afraid or no need to uh, just uh, no need to think more about this model because since it's the i think uh, most popular model uh, for image classification tax so uh, it's also useful in the uh, backbone of lots of models uh, this is the standard one so y you don't need to modify it or you don't need to uh, remember everything because this is open source and you will find this if you search in google for resnet 50 then you will uh, definitely find lots of solution and lots of easier implementation as well so here uh, as i said uh, in the identity block what uh, it's doing is we have convolution block and bash num relu activation and then same thing and then we have convolution bash num and then we have the shortcut to uh, join uh, this uh, above value to the relu activation again and then uh, we have again convolution block right so that means uh, again the convolution block is same thing except uh, passing in this shortcut also we are going to apply the convolution neural network and batch normalization so it's quite complex model uh, so lots of mathematics is going behind this model so but for us uh, like for us uh, who need the uh, who need to build the application of certain tax who need to do the um, something uh, some uh, the application then we don't need to worry about the model and its architecture we, we are just going to use it uh, so yeah so for this uh, as i as i said in this identity block so uh, i i wrote this function actually this function i copied it from the uh, uh, this course uh, Coursera deep learning specialization course uh, uh, it's provided by Andrew and G I think 
so i just copied this code from here because it's the standard model so we can uh, uh, easily use these uh, things if you are uh, if you want to learn more about this convolution neural network i highly recommend you to learn it from the ndung course in coursera and uh, this is for the uh, convolution block so it's i showed it here in the figure so this is my convolution block so yeah some of the convolution bash norm and activation relu these things are going on and then we have the shortcut as well and for the resnet 50 uh, as i uh, explained it here so we are uh, feeding our model with the zero padding first and then we have certain layers convolution and relu max pooling layers and then similar kind of uh, four layers and then at the end we are going to flatten so the core thing here uh, need to understand is um, the input shape so first of all we have to provide the input shape and then the number of classes uh, so i think by default i wrote it six but it should be ten for our uh, this particular problem and here uh, everything is written clearly uh, if you don't understand it uh, no need to afraid uh, since it's the popular model uh, we don't need to uh, we don't need to modify anything between uh, the code as well so just need to remember about this function resnet 50 and yeah in at the end so what we are doing is we are flattening our layer and then we are connecting it with the dense layer with the help of soft max soft max activation function and um, this will be our output so here so let me i think uh, let me run these cells i think i forgot to run it so okay now i i defined this resnet 50 uh model so now i'm going to call above function with input shape of 64 64 by 3 since our image is rgb image that's why channel is 3 and with the uh, class of 10 so let me run this so now our model is loaded uh, if you want to see how it look like then you can simply uh, simply write model dot model dot summary okay now uh, you can see it here so we have this model with input uh, input model with size of 64 64 by 3 and then all these uh, things are convolution max pooling layers and everything whatever we defined uh, in the above code section and uh, at the end uh, we are connected with the dense layer uh, and here if you see the uh, total parameter it has the 23 million parameters uh, and then uh, around 23 million five uh, hundred thousand uh, parameters are trainable parameters that means we have to train these uh, parameters and then build our model so now uh, for this uh, we have to compile our model with some optimizer and loss functions so for the optimizer uh, i think uh, for till this date i think adam is the best optimizer i feel like that uh, if you know about any other i mean there are lots of optimizers already in the uh, uh, research phase already um, successfully uh, developed but for most of the case adam optimizer is uh, the best and then if you want to know more about this optimizer you can search in the uh, google i'm not going to explain these things here and for the loss function since we have the uh, we we are dealing with the uh, 
classification type that means we have certain class let's say 10 classes so i'm going to use the categorical crush entropy so if you want to optimize your model i mean if you want to predict m it in a more accurate way um, i definitely suggest you to uh, look into try different loss functions and different optimizer with maybe different learning rates and uh, also for the metrics also by default uh, uh, i'm going to use the accuracy metric but of course it's up to you what which metric you want to uh, optimize so you you have to provide it here uh, instead of this you can uh, of course you can write your own loss function and then try to uh, optimize uh, your own matrix so yeah let me run this cell so now after that uh, now it's time to train our model so for the training uh, we can use the model dot fit function uh, and uh, for fitting we have to provide the train data set and then for the validation i am going to provide this uh, it's not the test data set but uh, I, I wrote variable is test data set it's actually the validation data set and uh, i am trying to run it for 20 posts and batch size of 32 uh, these things is i think not mandatory because uh, i already defined it in our uh, data set functions so if i run this cell uh, it will uh, train our model and for me i tried it with the 100 posts and it uh, uh, it take me around uh, 8 to 10 hours uh, it's it's really time consuming and time costly so um, i don't want to run this model right now uh, instead of running this training this uh, model uh, i'm going to load the use uh, load the model here so if you train it successfully uh, your model can be saved by model.save and then the name of your model so i already saved this model for the 100 reports so I, uh, in this video uh, i'm simply going to load my model so after saving the words uh, i mean the model i can simply import it mm, uh, i mean the uh, i can simply load it and then use it so simply uh, run this cell so load model and then it will load your model now for the analyzing so here is my uh, i mean loss function and accuracy function uh, i think i train it for the 100 posts uh, okay anyhow i i run it for 20 posts as well uh, that's why you are seeing uh, in the x-axis it's the posts and in the y-axis it's the accuracy so by the uh, each post uh, the our accuracy is increasing and loss is decreasing that means uh, we are uh, in the right track that means uh, our model is improving so if you train it for the larger number of efforts uh, you will definitely get more accuracy uh, than this one because uh, we can see it uh, it's still increasing mode right so yeah it's it's better to train your model for the longer time and now for uh, the our validation uh, since it's the classification type image classification type i think the best uh, way to validate this image is through confusion matrix so for that uh, actually i created two list first y predict and y true and then here uh, i'm applying the for loop for test data set uh, which contain image and label uh, and I'm here y true dot append I am appending the true value uh, since uh, the label is available in the uh, our label batch so I'm just appending it and then I'm trying to predict it model dot predict so predicting the image and then again I append this predicted variable to the my y predict uh, this list 
and then here what I do is np dot arg max means uh, it might predict the uh, mm, since our classes are 10 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so I am taking the uh, maximum argument and then uh, uh, flattening uh, maximum argument uh, in the uh, axis of 1 and I think if I equal to 300 okay here I think it's uh, it means uh, if we reach to the best size of uh, best number of 300 that means 300 into 32 image uh, we just break it because uh, test uh, running this predicting all these uh, images inside test data set is also taking lots of time uh, I mean around uh, 5 to 10 minutes I think uh, so for, for now I'm just uh, testing this model for 300 into 32 uh, 300 into 32 images so let's run it and it might take some time so i'll just stop my video and then start whenever it get ready all right now it's finished uh, predicting our image so now if i try to uh, plot the confusion matrix so it will look something like this so that means in the first class uh, if the true value uh, and the predicted value for 927 images is true and these are the false uh, values for class 1 and similarly for the second class we have uh, 1026 images were predicted truly uh, but other has some uh, some I mean mistake and similarly uh, this diagonal uh, diagonal uh, elements represent our true prediction uh, and other represent uh, the modal error and for uh, for writing this confusion matrix in a uh, little bit nicer way I, I simply write this function to plot the confusion matrix uh, I'm not going to explain these things because it's pretty simple I'm just using the matplotlib and then if I try to plot it so it will look like this uh, this same number we can see it in a little bit nicer way that's all about this function so here uh, we have the true level and then this is the predicted level so as you can see uh, it in the diagonal uh, elem diagonal uh, elements so uh, most of the images were predicted true but some of uh, them are predicted false uh, it's up to our model how we try to optimize it and how uh, how many posts we run it for so if you try to uh, optimize the model and then improve it so i highly recommend you to use the different optimizer with the different learning rates and also try to run it for the uh, more number of epochs yeah i think uh, that's all about this video i hope you liked it uh, thank you for watching